Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This week's video are my top 5 tips for students. So my first tip is to only use one coloured pen to take notes and then add colours in later. It is a lot easier and more efficient to stick to just one pen while writing notes and then you can come back in with highlighters or with coloured pencils at a later date. Not only does this make your notes prettier because let's face it we're all about the aesthetic here but it will also allow you to study anywhere without having to worry if you brought the correct pens with you. As well as this, when you use multiple colours while writing notes, you spend longer switching back and forth between pens than you do actually studying. Using one colour will force you to read everything that you write because there are no distractions and no pauses. If you're someone who does rewrite notes, then you can always leave out the colour here and just add it once you rewrite these notes. However, if you don't rewrite notes, then you can keep everything in this one notebook, colour or no colour. Tip number two is to put your flashcards in a document and then import them into Quizlet. This can be done in Excel or in Word. Not only is it actually quicker, but you'll always have a hard copy as well, just in case you don't have the internet or if something happens to your Quizlet account or if you just need to find a particular flashcard super fast. It also reduces the likelihood of you repeating terms or using similar definitions because as you can see, everything is in the one place. I know that flashcards don't work for everyone and that some people prefer to make physical flashcards instead of online ones, but there are also so many helpful things that flashcards allow you to do without having to use them for the traditional term and definition method. I have an entire video based on this, which I'll leave in a link in the description below, so definitely do go and check that out. Tip number three is to find out what type of learner you are. You guys, I cannot stress this enough. Every single student can be broken down into one of four different types of learners. There's visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or read and write. Now, before I delve any further into this, here's just a quick disclaimer. I know full well that not everyone is going to be 100% a visual learner or 100% an auditory learner. It's simply not possible. But it is the category that you tick the most boxes for that's important. It is that category that you should pay the most attention to. So, let's break this down. Visual learners study best when they can see what they are learning. This means charts, graphs, and outlines all work the best. Auditory learners study best when they can hear what they're learning. So verbal instructions, discussions, repeating things out loud all work for them. Kinesthetic learners study best when they can do what they are learning. This means practical examples, hands-on learning, or standing up and walking around while they're trying to study. Finally, read and write learners study best when they can, you guessed it, read or write what they are learning. This means books, dictionaries, and writing notes all work. So you might wonder what the heck all of this is about and what good it will do for you to know this. But finding out what type of learner you are immediately gives you an advantage while studying because you'll know from the get-go what you should be doing to maximize the amount of information that you can take in. So, if you're a visual learner, then you know that drawing diagrams and using plenty of colours will help you stay focused. If you're an auditory learner, then talking through the steps of something out loud will help you remember the most. If you're a kinesthetic learner, then recreating experiments or processes will help you best. And if you're a read-write learner, then rewriting notes over and over again will help you study most efficiently. So figure out what type of learner you are. There are hundreds of free quizzes online that will tell you and then implement those studying practices into your learning in order to achieve your maximum results. Tip number four is to find out what study time best suits you. Personally, I cannot stand the Pomodoro technique. It doesn't work for me and it never has. I feel like 25 minutes is too short a time to focus in and five minute breaks are too short a time to actually relax in. It took me years and years to understand and accept the fact that this is normal and that it wasn't for me. Every study tube and study blur that I came across all said, you're not studying correctly unless you use the Pomodoro technique. 
So I'm here to tell you today that no, you bloody well do not have to use the Pomodoro technique. In fact, the only technique that you do have to use is the one that works best for you. Personally, I love using a study app called Forest because it allows me to set any length of time that I want, ranging from 5 minutes up to 3 hours. And then it grows a cute little virtual tree while the time is ticking down. There's also an option to lock yourself out of your phone while the tree grows, so if you're someone who gets distracted easily, or if you want to go on social media while studying a lot, then this is an added bonus. If you have an account, then please add me as your friend. I will leave my username in the description box below. If you don't have an account, but you plan on downloading the app and trying it, then use this referral code when you create your account. If you use this code, you will get a bonus of crystals, which will allow you to buy super rare trees. Somewhat related to this is finding out when the best time for you to study is. You might prefer to get up early in the morning while the world is still asleep and study then, or you might find that studying late at night works best for you. Nearly every single study tube and study blur that I've come across have also said that studying late at night or even during the night is bad for you. Honestly, that is a load of rubbish. Some people simply cannot function in the morning in the exact same way that some people cannot function at night. So ignore anyone who says that it's unhealthy for you to be studying at 10 or 11 p.m. if that's what works best for you. As long as you do get enough sleep and you do put your health first, then you can study whenever the heck you want to. As well as this, maybe you're not the type of person who can study in the mornings or can study at night. Maybe you can sit still or remain focused long enough to have such long study sessions. This is perfectly okay as well. The study community has this horrible habit of telling people that, oh, here's what you should do to stay focused for longer, and here are the top 10 tips for time management, and this is how I study every day for three hours without fail. No, stop. The fact is, every single person on this planet is different and unique, and every single person has their own ways and methods of studying. Some of these people find it super easy to stay focused for three hours, but other people find it really difficult to stay focused for three hours. You don't need to be corrected or changed if this is the type of person you are, you just need to find a study method that works best for you. In addition to finding out what study times suit you, tip number five is finding out what resources suit you. There are hundreds and thousands and millions of resources out there, guys, both online and in books and notes and podcasts and tutors. Not all of these are going to work for you. Every single person on this planet learns differently. Some of the websites that your professors tell you to study on just won't work for you, and some of the apps that your friends swear by likewise won't help, and that is perfectly okay. You need to find what works best for you you need to really love and helped me to narrow things down is rachel.ie. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Basically, there are these three posts in particular that give a list of the best free apps for students. They're divided into subjects, productivity and organization, and specifically language learning. It gives a brief description of the top 10 apps in each category, as well as why they are good or bad and who would benefit from using them. So do go and check out those three articles. Like I said, the link is in the description below. Okay, so this isn't so much as a tip as it is a life hack for students, but I've had a ton of people ask me about this, both, so I decided to do just a very quick tutorial about it, and it is how to tie your earphones. If you don't have a case to store them in, then here's a quick and easy way to tie your earphones so they don't get tangled. So first of all, you need to hold your earphones in your hand and hold the actual ear parts in place with your bottom three fingers. So your thumb and your index finger should remain pointed. Next, you need to start wrapping the wire of your earphones in a figure eight direction. So go around your thumb, cross over the webbing of your finger, and so on and so forth until you get to the end of your earphone wire. Then you just need to wrap that once around the middle of your earphones, 
and then pull off both loops from your fingers. Depending on how loose or tight you did this, it can be a bit of a struggle, but after a few times practicing, you will get it spot on. So once you have removed it from your hand, then you can pull the end of your earphones tighter and wrap it around. Or personally, I prefer to put one end of the earphones through the first loop and then put the earbuds through the second loop. So this keeps them secure and safe and it doesn't damage them, it doesn't bend any of the wires and it will definitely prevent them from being tangled in your pocket or in your bag or wherever you keep them. So as I said, in addition to this, you should also protect the bottom part of the wire. This is where your earphones plugs into your phone or your laptop. This is the part that gets bent and damaged the most and it is really quick to fray and once it does fray you guys no matter how good quality the rest of your earphones are unfortunately they will stop working so to do this you can use washi tape or duct tape but personally i prefer using a spring like this because it isn't as bulky and it still allows the wire to have its full range of motion it just helps to support it while it does move so you can probably buy small springs like these on Amazon or on eBay or in a stationery sh shop somewhere. But a far better way of doing this, and also a cheaper and more environmentally friendly way of doing this, is to take apart an old pen that you can't use anymore and to take out the small spring that is usually inside one. And these pens is usually a clicky pen because the spring is what helps it to click. So once you have removed it, you should pull it apart slightly just to lengthen the spring and then you can start to wrap it around the cable of your earphones until it surrounds it completely. And that is it for this week's video. I update new videos every two weeks. I hope you will like this video, subscribe and please comment any ideas you have for future videos. I will talk to you guys soon.